Welcome back to Vendetta Sports Media's NBA Season Previews. That is Jackson Law. I'm Jared Prosser. And today, Jackson, we're going northwest. We're talking Trailblazers. What's your, uh, what's your thoughts on not, not just the upcoming season, but how they went last season? Yep, it is it is that time. It is Dame time. Time to discuss Dame. Last season, pretty pretty on par for the course for what Portland has been over the past decade, maybe more so. Uh, Forty two and thirty out west, uh, good enough for six seed. That's 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 about normally where they fall every year in between the six to four seed. If it's a great season, they're the fourth seed. If it's an like a, a down season, they're still the sixth seed. That's just that's how good. I, I'm, I'm, name. Yeah, it's it's Portland. It's Portland. Yeah, exactly. Uh, first round playoff exit uh, to Denver. Lost 4-2. to two. Actually had the series tied 2-2 two, two at one point. Uh, but the MVP, the Joker, was just was just too much, too much for them to handle, which was which made made sense because the the, the big situation in um in in Portland was not the best last last season. An ass canter was their most reliable big man, if if that means oh, means anything. <laughs> that that's not entirely fair to Yusuf Nurkic. He was good. Well, Yusuf Nurkic. Be- yes, but it's it's like Yusuf Nurkic wasn't the same Yusuf Nurkic that he was the previous season, and I'm going to attribute that to the injury. So perhaps this before season the, before the late break. Yeah. Exactly. So perhaps this season Nurkic has a uh, a bit of a resurgence. And fun fact for those of you that don't know this, but uh, the the Nuggets actually drafted Nurkic. They could have had Nurkic and uh, Jokic if they wanted to. They had that opportunity to, but they they let Nurkic go in favor of of Jokic, which I mean has well, worked out for them. They brought in um, one of the family brothers. Like I get mixed up as to which one. I think it was Mace. Mitch or Malcolm yeah. or Molly yeah, I just, or something. Yeah, I just, one of the Plumley brothers. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> they meld into one. <laughs> uh, so let's look at their let's look at their off season. Uh, of course, they made their big trade through the season, bringing in Norm Powell for Gary Trent Jr. But what else did they do in the off season, Jackson? <sighs> well, they uh, they lost an ass canter. Um, and then they actually, um, they also lost Zach Collins as well, which, um, Zach Collins just couldn't stay healthy. It was, it was so disappointing. You saw the flashes, you saw what was there that he could be a major contributor for this team when he was healthy and he got into his groove. He just couldn't get in his groove all too much because he continuously was injured and, and sometimes as good of a player as they may be. And as much as you like them, sometimes the injuries the injuries get in the way. You you need your play. You need players. The best of the best ability is reliability. Availability. Yep. Availability. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So you took the words out of my mouth. So the so it, it just gets to a point where you have to move off of them. And in in return, they've they've actually replaced both players, and I think fairly well. Well. And as Cantor and Cody Zeller, I'm not I'm not saying Cody Zeller is is a world beater, but he could be a serviceable back, serviceable backup if used correctly. Zach Collins they replaced with Larry Nance Jr., who we talked in a previous episode with Cleveland. Huge upgrade. Huge upgrade. He was, I would argue, the heart and soul of the Cavs team, and now you're bringing a guy like that who who is loved by players and fans and execs all across the board. Good locker room guy who can play basketball. Don't don't get it twisted. He's in the, you know, sometimes people say, "Well, he's a great locker room guy," and that's that's a nice way of saying that he can't play the game. Yeah. He's he's a great locker room guy. No, I, he's a great locker room guy and he can play basketball. So massive upgrade uh over Zach Collins, especially Larry Nance can can stay healthy then I mean, anybody in that position, as long as they were healthy and did the things that Zach Collins did, is an upgrade over Zach Collins just because they're available. And you've uh, you failed to cover one of the big outs there, though, Mello. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> or is he really a big out? He's not. I mean, he's not really a big out. He's just. I mean, it's it's Mello. He's a big name that left, but yes. I, I I left him off because. I, I feel in the grand scheme of the, he, Mello never moved the needle. 
for no. Portland. He he never moved them up. He never moved them when he got there, and his departure isn't going to make them a worse team. Yeah, he, at this stage of his career, he's the classic. Everything he gives at one end, he gives back at the other. Yeah. So with all, with all that said and done, the key player for this season for the Blazers, Jackson. Key player might be a slight surprise here. I, I figured that you may be going with me for Dame. I'm going CJ McCollum. Wow. With this. Okay. And 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 the, and the controversy. And the, yeah, and and we'll we'll talk more about Dame here here in a little bit as we as we get going. But CJ McCollum, and here's the reason why. I really like CJ. Okay. I'm about to criticize him, but I want to I want to get it out of the way first that I like CJ. Okay, if wow. if if I had the opportunity to pair him with Ja and Jaron in Memphis for a good price, I would I would I would take him hundred percent. But he has this reputation, and you get a reputation because of your history of being wildly inconsistent, especially when it counts. The most consistent that he ever was was the year that the Blazers made it to the Western Conference Finals. <clears throat> Excuse me. If they have any hope of making it back to the Western Conference Finals or making a finals run or just a deep playoff run, it's all going to be reliant on CJ. Now, the the regular season is 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 the regular season. They The Blazers have always been a good regular season team. You can almost notch them in for anywhere from 45 to 50 wins, maybe even sometimes more. But CJ McCollum is the key to this team playing because when him when him and Dame are both on, there is no force in the NBA that can stop those two. They are the best guard tandem in the league. If Dame is doing Dame things, he's you know dropping dimes, you know hitting shots from thirty five feet from the basket. But then he's also got CJ who is his right-hand man, who can also hit threes at a high clips during the game, hit five, six threes over the course of an entire game. That's where the success and failure of this team kind of relies. I know what I'm going to get pretty much from everyone else on this roster, but when it comes down to crunch time, CJ is the guy that's going to move that needle for them when they are in positions to succeed. So if CJ is your key man, who comes in as your swing player, that X factor? The X factor isn't, it is a player and it is Dame, but it's not from his play. It's his patience that we're going to have to pay attention to this season. I mentioned it in a previous video, which this video may come out before it. Who who knows how these end up being released um, but you know, it talked about patience on, on the outside. What a player is saying may not always be what they are feeling. And more so this past year, I don't recall there being as many trade rumors for Dame in any other season than this past season. Especially That's with the true. whole especially with the whole Ben Simmons uh uh saga and the and and going on in Philly, and it just seems like Dame and Philly would be a really great match. But you know that's that's just wishful that's just wishful thinking for for NBA fans because yeah it's, it's not happening it's not happening no no but I don't know if Dame can take another first round exit this season or just another disappointment what what would be considered a disappointment and a success for them I I don't really know because I don't I don't think. At least on paper, I don't think they're good enough to win a championship. I, I would. There's a couple of teams that I would put ahead of them to win a championship. Oh, there's more than a couple. Uh, true, yeah. true. I, I was, I was trying to be kind. You know, that was, that was, that was me being kind in, in the midst of, of you know, bashing. Well, not bashing, but you, of being critical. Of being critical. Let me put it that way. Um, being the velvet sledgehammer. Exactly. <laughs> but I just. I don't know how much more Dame can take, especially because with a, with a new head coach, Chauncey Billups, first time head coach. What if the two don't really mesh together? What if Dame doesn't like the system, and it's just the 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 dominoes just kind of continue to fall, and he comes to the realization that I've been loyal 
but it's never gotten me anywhere. And I want to win a title. And he's been in Portland for so long that it's to the point that no one would no one would blame him for for leaving. Now they would probably blame him if he went and joined the Lakers. You know, that's there's you know <laughs> they would blame him for that. Uh, but if he just wanted to go to another contender somewhere, that's not the Blazers or not the Blazers, um, not the Lakers, mm. then I mean he's within his he's within his right to he he tried for many many years in Portland and they just couldn't figure it out, just couldn't get it done, and he's getting older, which I mean NBA players can play till they're like sixty now because of modern medicine. So you're saying I've got a chance still. You, you still have a chance. You still have a chance. Just as much as I have a chance where I still have four years of eligibility in college. So I've just got to pick my one sport and then go back to college to play it. So that way I can sign me some of these new name, image, and likeness deals that everybody's getting. Well, I'm older than the Gasols, so I'm probably, <laughs> I probably really don't have a chance. You, you did mention a really good point there. Chauncey Billups, new coach. Now I seem to recall that there's been a little bit of a uh, little bit of media coverage on Dame not necessarily endorsing the move, not not trashing the move as such, but more saying that our our problem wasn't our coach, our problem wasn't Terry Stotts. So not necessarily saying I don't agree with bringing in Billups, but more saying I don't think we needed to make a change. So is that something where? If Billups doesn't impress Lillard, if if the, if wins don't get on the board early, is that something that could blow up? I think I think it has the potential to. Like you said, Terry Stotts was that was Dame's guy. Hmm. Stotts had his job for as long as he did because of Dame's endorsement. When they yeah. when they continuously had disappointing seasons where they looked good but then had early playoff exits. Terry Stott, like any other coach would have probably would have been fired a couple years ago, but yeah. Terry Stotts kept his job because that was that's who Dame loved. Dame loved him as a coach, loved him as a person, and the organization obviously wanting to keep Dame happy kept him on, but eventually it just gets to the point where you can you can only hit the same level so many times with the same thing that you're doing before you have to try to change it up. Even even if it means the the Blazers have to they have to blow up the whole thing in the, yeah. in like two years if they have to blow up the whole thing or next season they have to blow up the whole thing sometimes that's what you got to do in pursuit of getting the championship yeah you can only bite your head against the wall so many times so Jackson we've spoken about the key player controversially C J McCollum and the X factor <laughs> in Dane what is something that you're looking for what is something that you are looking forward to seeing something that intrigues you about this Blazers team? Uh, we've already mentioned him. Chauncey Billups, first year head coach. I have absolutely no idea how Chauncey Billups is mm. as a head coach. Yeah. Great, great point guard. Pistons legend. Also semi uh, Nuggets legend because he had a, he had uh, some good runs with, uh, with Mello. We call in, him in a Denver. Colorado legend <laughs> given his college career. Oh, <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but um, either way, a great NBA point guard. Um, I, I I didn't really care much for all the ESPN NBA stuff, so I mean I, I watched him some on on there, but and he was and he was uh, he had some he had some wacky takes out there as as most uh, in, uh, 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 mainstream NBA personalities uh, do when they're on uh, national TV. They got to do stuff to keep it fresh and just say stuff to get the ratings and whatnot. Uh, but as a first year head coach, I have no idea. He kind of has it easy. It's like. Well, I've got two stars on my team in Damon CJ. That's my offense. That's who my offense centers around, you know. <clears throat> but I he's again an unproven commodity as a coach in the NBA. And just because you're a great player doesn't always mean that's going to translate as being a great coach. You have an obviously a great understanding of the game, especially at his position, the position that he played the point guard. A lot of point guards succeed as being head coaches in the NBA. Sometimes they don't. Look at look at Jason sometimes Kidd. You get Steve. Yeah, sometimes you get Jason Kidd. Sometimes you get Magic Johnson. Awesome point guards. You know, arguably the two best ever. But yeah, not great coaches. It's an interesting point you raised that it's a bit of a free hit for him. And I, th- I think you are right. It's something I hadn't considered. But if the Blazers drop away, 
then we know that it's you know we, we could say well you know it's <laughs> it's roster construction or, or this or that if they stay the, pretty much the same well that's just who the blazers always are and if they elevate themselves we know that he'll get more credit for replacing Stotts than what, say, Cody Zeller or Larry Nance do for solidifying mm-hmm. the bench and the defense, respectively. Uh, so you're probably right. There's going to be an, you know, in, improve, stay steady, or or get worse. There's probably going to be an outsized, an outsized portion of whatever that blame is that goes to to Billups. I mean, he's the head coach, so so they're always yeah. it's always going to be. And and like we said, you know, we've called them the same old Blazers. That's that's the bar. That's the bar. Like the sixth, fifth seed. That's the bar for for the yeah. Blazers. So a successful season. You you mentioned it before. You don't know what a successful season is, but let's just take a prediction on what their season will be, and we can touch on it again at the end of the season and decide whether it's a success. Yep. So Vegas has uh, the over under at 44 and a half wins. I actually like that number. I'd take the slight yeah. over at 45. Um, if you know, if I were to, to put money down just because I think Dame is so good that he's, he's going to carry that team. He's going to, he's going to have a couple games where he pops off for 40, a 50 point game, may even have a 60 point game. At some point this season, Dame Dame's always good for a couple big games, um, and he always seems to show up against the the bigger opponents that they'll play this yeah. season. And they they usually don't have too much of a problem beating beating the lesser teams out west and in in the east. It's just how good they finish depends on how well they play against other playoff teams or just teams that may not be great but are just terrible terrible matchups for them. Which is essentially any team that has a uh, a big post presence or one lockdown perimeter defender that's going to shut down either Dame or CJ probably CJ because he's he's the one you could probably shut down the easiest I would say out of out of Dame I think Dame has a little bit more in his arsenal to get himself open Undoubtedly. also he can just pull up from a step after half court and it'd be an easy shot for him so he's got that uh going for him but, yeah, but that's that's a bad shot Paul George <laughs> it's a bad shot oh <laughs> Man, the career that so Paul we, George, the trajectory that Paul George had, mm. and then after his injury, it's just been down <laughs> downhill from just success wise, from potential wise, from the teams that he's been on to stuff like saying that's a bad shot when well, Dame I, drains. I am interested your- to see what happens. Yeah, you know, we haven't recorded our Clippers preview yet, but. I'm interested to see what happens with Paul George because when Kawhi went down in the playoffs, PG stepped up. He did. We're sort of going off topic here considering we're talking Blazers, but PG did step up. So that's something that's a little bit of a teaser for our Clippers preview, but uh, it's probably a good note since we've stepped away from Portland Mm -hmm. to uh, wrap up this particular preview. So that is that. 45 wins for Jackson Law for the Portland Trail Blazers. So this will be out, of course on our website, vendettasportsmedia.com. Keep an eye on our socials on YouTube. The video will definitely be up there. So hit like, hit subscribe, and keep an eye for all of the rest of our NBA previews, which will be coming out in the two weeks before the NBA season starts on October 19th. For Jackson Law, I'm Jared Prosser, and we will see you next time.